What's up guys? This will be uh, part one of my deep speech tutorials. Um, in this video we're just going to get it up and running, just uh, run some basic inference on your CPU and uh, just, you know, test it out to make sure that it works the way we expect it to. So I'm going to be going through, I'm going to have all the commands and everything you need to do on my blog here. Um, and I'll also link you to Mozilla's uh, repo where they actually implement deep speech if you want to dig deeper into the code. All right, so what is deep speech? So from that GitHub repo, deep speech is an open source speech to text engine using a model trained by machine learning techniques based on Baidu's deep speech research paper. Uh, Project deep speech uses Google's TensorFlow to make the implementation easier. So now with that out of the way, we can get started. Um, we're gonna use Conda to manage our virtual environment here. If you've never used Conda or you don't know how to um, install it or whatever, you can check out my uh, blog. I have um, a tutorial on installing that. So we're gonna create one called DS um, for deep speech and we'll just use the latest version of Python. Yep. All right, let's activate it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is pip install deep speech. All right, now that we have that installed, um, you can see I already have these pulled down. So we're going to need an audio sample directory here and a directory containing all of our models, right? These are what I pulled down and then I untarred them both right here. And the commands to do that are right on my blog. So what you'll do is you'll copy and paste this curl command right there. It'll take about 10 minutes, um, but you can pull it down, should be fine. Uh, then you'll untar tar it with this command right here. Um, you'll do the same exact thing to get the audio files. After you've done that and you have the same audio and deep speech uh, 0 0.6.1 models directory here, um, you should probably explore them a little bit to see what we're working with. So let's go into the audio. All we have in here is uh, just a few WAV files um, containing some audio that uh, Deep Speech can be used to run inference against. We'll also use our own voice later on in the video as well. And in the Deep Speech models directory, um, the important stuff to pay attention to here is the language model binary and uh, this model right here. This is a model I know they used for training and then they converted it over to a PBMM because essentially it runs faster. Um, you don't have to be concerned with that right now uh, since really all you'll need right now is this file right here. All right, so let's make sure we're back in the root of this directory for this next command to work. And you can pull this right off the block, right? You can basically copy and paste everything to make sure that it works. Um, but first, let's listen to some of the audio. So you'll notice the audio that I'm passing in here is 2830, right? That's this WAV file right here. So let's play that really fast. So I'm using a CLI tool called CMuse. You can use any tool you want to play it back, but here we go. So let's see what he has to say. Experience proves this. Experience proves this, right? Uh, you'll know. You'll notice that Deep Speech does an okay job at um, figuring out what he said, but we'll also test it against our own voice. And you can see that Deep Speech generally does a pretty good job. And eventually, we'll go over training it to make it better too. So for the next thing, yeah, let's just run it and see what Deep Speech thinks that he just said. And we have to get out of the audio directory. Make sure you're in the root of the directory for this next command to work because it's just, you know, it's got relative paths here. So let's talk about this command actually for a second. When we pip install deep speech, we installed this deep speech command, right? Uh, we're pointing to this model that I just showed you, that PBMM. And the reason we're using the PBMM is because it's just faster at inference than the .pb, right? And then we're passing from the audio directory here, we're passing this WAV file. All right, so now let's run it. 
Okay, so you can ignore all of this down to here. This is what it thought it said. Experience proofs less, right? So that's pretty that's pretty close to proves this, right? Um, so not too bad, but could be better. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna want to do is check it out on our own voice. So to do that, I recommend installing a package called Socks, right? This guy right here, and this will all be on my blog as well. Um, if you're on Ubuntu or some Debian-based distro, you can install it with sudo apt install socks. Uh, on Arch Linux, you can get it from the AUR, and on Mac, you can brew install it. The reason we're installing socks is because when we install socks, we get a rec command or a record command. So we can record our voice with specific parameters uh, that make it easier for deep speech to understand what we're saying. So. And I'll go over them next. So here's what we'll do. We'll record our voice, and let's talk about what we're doing here. So we're using the rec command to record our voice. Um, the R is for rate, and we're doing 16K, so 16 kilohertz, and mono channel, right? So then we'll also store our recording in myrecording.wav. So let's get started. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. All right. So you can just control C when you're done. And uh, you'll be out of the recording. So now you should see my recording dot wave. And now we can run it against that. So you just press up, up a couple of times to get your old command back. And we'll just back out the audio pointing to the audio directory. And we'll run it against our new my recording dot wave. All right, and you can see it did a lot better this time. Um, so that's not a perfect example of their old example because deep speech is actually pretty good. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It got it all, right? And depending on where you are, it'll do really well, like how where you're positioned on the mic. Um, you know, like uh, accents and all that kind of stuff plays a role. But training it on on your own speech and trading it in general on other things can can improve this as well but as a base model it's pretty good so we should also talk uh, really quick about what you want to see when um, when you pass a dot wave to to uh, to deep speech so essentially deep speech um, it only does really well with 16 kilohertz and one and mono channel, right? It can, I think it can work with other ones. Like it could work with, like you could pass a different rate in, you could pass other stuff in, but it won't, um, it won't run inference as well. So if we do media info, and this is another command you can install on um, my recording dot wave. <clears throat> This is how we'll know that it's actually recorded in the right way, right? So if you want to use a different, um, a different uh, way of recording your voice into a dot wave than the rec command uh, that we used earlier, you can check that it's in a good format using this command media info. So you'll essentially want it to be, you'll want it to have a bit rate of 256 kilobytes per second, uh, be mono channel or have one channel, and be at a sampling rate of 16 kilohertz. All right. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video, we'll go over how to run inference on a GPU. And uh, in the following videos, we'll go over things like training it and uh, getting it built into something like a server so you can send commands to it.